Hey guys, it's me, Vic Seven Two Three, here with some Battlefield 4 rush gameplay on Siege of Shanghai, but that's not what I'm going to be talking about in this video. I'm doing a commentary. It's been a little while since I've done one of these. I used to literally do one of these every single day, just sit down in front of a mic and talk. And a lot of you guys seem to enjoy those, so I don't want to completely leave those behind. So I'm going to be making an effort to continue doing these. And as you probably know by seeing the title of this video, what I'm going to be talking about is an event called Tough Mud. And now you guys will probably already know um, I took part in this yesterday. If you follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, I was posting about it, pictures and that sort of good stuff on my social media pages, which are always linked in the description. So if you haven't already, make sure to follow one or all of those to stay up to date with things going on. I also post all my videos onto there and random pictures, giveaways, contests, good stuff like that. So don't miss out on any of that. But anyway, first of all, before I get too far into this, um, what is Tough Mudder? So Tough Mudder is an obstacle course, but saying it's an obstacle course doesn't really do it any justice. You can look it up online if you're that interested, but in summary, it's a 12 mile obstacle course through really, really thick mud. And the obstacles, they're, they're kind of obstacles, but they're also kind of ridiculous. Um, for example, getting shocked with 10,000 volts um, while crawling under barbed wire through um, puddles of water, so muddy water. Uh, that That's kind of like one of the uh, obstacles. I'm gonna go into detail and talk about the whole experience in, uh, in general later on. And uh, also the whole event was the whole um, of the the Tough Mudder that me and KSI JJ did together was filmed um, by us with GoPros, by a bunch of runners with us with GoPros, and also a film crew um, by Volvic UK. So um, within the next couple of weeks, probably within the next month, around three weeks from now, there'll be um, videos on our channel and their channel that you guys can watch, edited videos of the whole event in summary, so you can look forward to those. Um, but actually, you know, a video doesn't really, you know, tell the story behind the scenes. You're only gonna see highlights of everything that went on and I wanted to kind of just talk and give you guys a full picture of the thing in this video right here because I guess it's something different um, some of you may have done it before if you have mm, so much respect to uh, to you it's ridiculous I didn't realize quite how insane it was gonna be and uh, anyway going back to what exactly it is so 12 miles 12 miles doesn't sound ridiculous the furthest I'd ever really been running before was you know two three miles um, every couple of days really only got into running recently as you guys will know if you're older subscribers, I used to do a lot of swimming a couple of times a week. But when I moved away from home into this house with a bunch of other YouTubers, um, I kind of I stopped that because, and I kind of slowed down when all my school friends from back at home went to university. Then I kind of slowed down Then when I moved out. I pretty much stopped swimming in the same way. I still swim occasionally whenever we go to the gym, but that's just about it. But um, yeah, I'm, I mean, 12 miles doesn't sound terrible, but the thing is it's 12 miles up and down hills through ridiculously thick mud while it's kind of half raining. So we were actually the, uh, we ran the London, um, the London West Tough Mudder course, which apparently was one of the most difficult courses there has been yet, just because one, there was so much mud. I'd say for the majority of the track, I'd say there was about um, eight to 10 inches of thick mud to uh, run through and um, even when I tried going off the edge of the course a little bit just to avoid some of the mud I'd end up running through nettles and my ankles would get stung up which was not fun that happened actually a fair bit so really thick mud which one makes things difficult but the thing that made it even more difficult it was constantly up and down hills up and down hills I'd say 70% was going up and down hills and the other 30% was running on the flat and you know going uphill wouldn't be too bad but again getting stuck in the thick mud and going downhill you couldn't go quickly otherwise you would slip and face plant into the mud, which I saw plenty of people do, captured plenty of people doing that on my GoPro. I slipped a couple of times, but nothing, nothing too bad. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the overview, and I'd seen plenty of videos of doing it, and that's why I agreed to do it, but when you see the videos, it's, it's cut up, it's like, you know, you watch like 30 seconds of running, then they do one of the obstacles, and then, you know, a bit more running, but the actual idea of doing the whole thing is kind of ridiculous. With all the filming segments that we did along the way, it took about five hours to complete. So this is five hours being out in the cold and the wind and pretty much completely drenched for a lot of the time because most of the obstacles on the course we were doing involved swimming through water, falling into water, jumping into water, going swimming through icy water, literally water filled with ice, and then you have to run in between these. So it was kind of ridiculous. Um, I think I ended up doing, um, I'm not sure ex the exact number. I think it was like 13 out of 20 of the obstacles. I skipped a couple of them just because we didn't have time with the filming and I was literally 
I was destroyed. I was I was not in the I was in a pretty bad way. Um, I mean the first I'd say four miles were great, and at one point after about the first four miles were all right. It kind of struggled towards the sixth mile, and uh, also I had the worst trainers ever. I just picked up a random scruffy pair of trainers because I knew they would get completely destroyed by all the mud and water and everything, and they were really really bad trainers. They were just the wrong shape for my feet, and they pretty much cut off the circulation to my feet most of the time I was running. So uh, that was that was a big mistake. If you guys do ever plan on doing Tough Mudder, one, make sure you're prepared, it's ridiculous, and two, make sure you get good trainers. Um, that would be my main advice. And uh, three, do it when it's sunny. Don't do it when it's raining or cold because it makes it pretty miserable at times. But anyway, um, yeah, the first four to six miles were all right. We did actually take a shortcut um, after that point just so we could get all of the obstacles filmed before it got dark. Um, but yeah, um, going back, so what did we actually go through? What were the, uh, the obstacles that we faced along the way? And you guys will be able to see video of all of this um, down the line. But I thought, you know, while it's all fresh in my mind, and I can actually give you kind of the feelings behind the scene that you won't really get from the edited video at the end. You'll just see us doing stuff but not really know what it was kind of like from my point of view. As someone who's not really trained for it. Um, and it isn't, I wouldn't say I'm the peak of physical fitness. I'm a gamer, I play video games. I mean, I'm not, I'm not like unfit, but uh, at the same time, I'm not, you know, like most of the people who are there who are just ridiculous. So much respect for all of the people that were there going along with it. So it started off with, um, you know, a bunch of us just doing exercises, warms up. Then we ran um, the start of the course, the first, uh, probably 800 meters was uphill, which already seemed to tire out some people. Just race to the top of that then. It's really thick mud. You'll see all of this in the video. If you've seen any previous Tough Mudder videos, you'll know exactly what that's all about. But yeah, we started off. First obstacle we got to was just a bunch of hay bales we had to vault over. T uh, nothing too serious, nothing too serious. But the second obstacle was horrible. Okay, so it was called Arctic Anema, and it involved us jumping into... I'd say what was like, just basically a, a uh, I don't even know how to describe it, it was just a, a pool basically, a pool of ice filled water, so it's water with, that has just been filled with ice. So we had to jump into there, swim forward about um, a metre and a half, then swim under a barrier, come up on the other side, swim another metre and a half, and then haul ourselves out of there, and so cold, colder than anything I've experienced before. Jumped out literally like I was I was I thought my body was just gonna give up on me as I got out of that literally You'll see on the camera footage. I was just screaming. I was like, oh my god. What was that? and uh just colder than anything I've experienced before and the thing is it didn't end once we were out of the ice pool because all of our clothes um, you know, trainers, everything was still just soaked in ice cold water and that's the thing that you have to go through is you, you're just you're just, you're just constantly wet like with just cold dampness and it's horrible and uh, actually the after the shot kind of wore off and the adrenaline kicked in that wasn't too bad we had to run straight back up a hill carry on along the course um there were a bunch of guys in like pink fairy costumes which was pretty hilarious just running along with their wands it, it was quite random there were like some guys dressed up as like bumblebees and like little yellow tutus which was also quite hilarious but um yeah after that it wasn't you know once it was initially over that wasn't too bad then we ran on to the next next thing which was what was this it was uh oh yeah sorry sorry before arctic anema there was kiss of mud which was basically just crawling through mud under barbed wire wasn't too bad at all i actually managed to get through that pretty quickly um i wasn't even using my legs i was just pulling myself along with my arms which actually worked out quite well so that was, that was about a 10 meter stretch, crawling through mud under barbed wire. That wasn't too bad at all. Then we moved on to the next one, uh, the next obstacle, which was called Glory Blades, which are basically just tall slanted walls that we had to pull ourselves over. And uh, I went for it at first, and like literally as I was pulling myself up, I think I like pulled a muscle in my chest, and it just hurt so much. Dropped down, had to kind of vault myself over sideways to get over those, but got over those, wasn't too bad. The next one we got up to, was uh, what was this one it was the uh i'm trying to look. i've got a little map here of the actual course we ran i can't see oh yeah um just a tip which was basically little um little ledges that you had to kind of shuffle along and then kind of shimmy along um holding onto the top of a wall but our gopros were out of battery at that point so that didn't get captured then we moved on to the next um 
next obstacle, which was about six, four to six miles into the course, I don't remember which, the boa constrictor, we had to crawl through pipes which were submerged in water, go through a little water thing at the bottom, and this is all, this isn't nice water, this is like muddy, grimy, cold water. Not, not very good at all, and uh, I don't know if I already said, but we were the last group to run the London West course, so that I think it had been running for two days, and we were the last group on the second day, so the mud had intensified. It had been raining as well, so it was just more mud than, more mud than I've ever experienced, ever. Like, we had mud stuck to our face, just like, all over, just our, like, everything, just covered in mud. Um, we started with white t-shirts. They were literally brown by the end. Just everything was just covered in mud. So we went through the boa constrictor tunnels. It wasn't actually too bad for me. I am a tiny bit claustrophobic. So that was the one obstacle I really didn't want to do. But it wasn't too bad in the end. There wasn't actually water in the pipes. The, the pipes kind of slanted down into water. Then came up out of the other side. Just meant we were covered in more mud. And we got out of that. Um, then from that point, basically, uh, the other runners we were with from Volvic... Um, they were really like on point. Some of them had done Tough Mudder before, so they just went on ahead. We took a little shortcut across to uh, one of the other obstacles, which was we skipped a couple, then we went over to the um, to the Electric Eel. So this is the one you guys may have heard about that I mentioned at the start. So this is pretty much you're crawling through puddles on the ground, like through water, like a little eel, but you get shocked with 10,000 volts. There are little wires dangling down, and as you go through, there's a random chance each of them will just shock you with 10,000 volts. Volts, which if I had to describe, whatever the shock is, it feels like you've been punched in the back at that point, and then, um, and then you've just got, and it kind of makes your heart just race. It like makes you panic for a second. So uh, that was that was an experience. I've never actually been electrocuted before. JJ had through his electric shock collar. Um, FIFA videos and um, football videos you may have seen on his channel, but I'd never experienced being electrocuted before, so that was fun and uh, a great experience. Not really. I also managed to headbutt one of the wooden posts as I dived in because they were like, "Who's gonna go? Who's gonna go?" I was like, "Let's go for it!" Ran, dived in, headbutted the post as I went in, started crawling through, snapped the GoPro off my chest mount um, in the middle of crawling through. I couldn't stop to search for it. I couldn't stop to like realized how much I'd hit my head because I was getting shocked as I was going through. I think I got shocked about four times. So I just had to carry on crawling as fast as I could. Then I got to the other side as I was crawling out of the trap. I got shocked again, jumped up, smacked my back into another wooden post. So I was, I was pretty injured. I injured myself more by bashing into things than I did from the actual electric shocks in that one. So you'll, you'll get to see that in the video too. Um, got through that one. Then, uh, Literally covered in muddy water again, just like shaking, just like what is what is going on? Why am I doing this? Honestly, I'm not at all cut out for tough mudder, but hey, it's an experience. Uh, I'm, I, was, I was glad I did it. So anyway, yeah, there's electric eel. Then we went on to the next one, which is called walk the plank. So this is kind of Volvic's own obstacle they added into the course. Pretty much you climb a three and a bit meter tall tower, go to the top of it, jump off into a massive pool of muddy water once again, swim out of it, get out, and feel terrible. So uh, that one, I'm, I'm fortunately, I'm, I'm quite good with swimming and diving and that sort of thing because I did it. But even so, when we got to the top of the tower, I was like, oh my god, is this actually happening? I was a bit of a, a, bit of a wreck at that point. Because when you're standing there completely drenched in the cold wind, and they're trying to get you to film different bits and bobs and um, that sort of stuff, you just get really cold really fast. So... That was, uh, wasn't looking forward to that one. Again, wasn't sure I'd do it, but we got to the top of the tower, and then as soon as we got there, we were like, three, two, one, go. We we're like, oh my God. So we jumped straight off into it. We managed to synchronize the jump, me and JJ. And the thing is, as we landed in the water, you've got to remember that we're wearing, we're fully clothed. So our clothes were just sucking in this water. It was brown muddy water. I didn't want to open our eyes. So literally you just had to swim up and just hope that the surface would be that. I didn't know if I was going up, if I was still going down. About two and a half seconds later, broke the surface. I was like, thank God I didn't drown. That's a good thing, right? That's a good thing, right? Anyway, hold myself out of that one. Um, got one of those little reflective heat thingy, um, 
coat things on, which helped keep me a little bit warmer, but still, at this point, I was like, what am I doing with myself? I hate this. Next one we went up to, uh, we skipped the hero walls, which are just like four meter high walls that you have to throw each other over. We went on to um, hanging tough, which is basically monkey, monkey bar type things, like swinging handhold things. We have to swing across a pool of water. Made it past the first two. Then as I reached out for the third one, caught onto the third one as I switched my weight. Just our hands are kind of muddy and slippery, so just slipped off that. Fell into cold, muddy water once again. Everything involved cold, muddy water, so pretty horrible. This is after about four hours of being out doing the, uh, doing the course as well. Uh, managed to get through that just, well, swam to the other side, hauled myself out, ran the last probably half mile down the hill towards the two final um, obstacles. There was one called Everest, which is a massive sloping high wall. I'd say it went up to about five meters high. You had to sprint, run up the kind of, I'd say it was a quarter pipe kind of thing. You had to jump up, hope someone at the top would catch onto you and help you um, climb over the top. Didn't think I'd make it over that one either, but um, some guys managed to catch me and help me over the top of that one. The whole of our team made it over that obstacle. Then the final obstacle, hey, where would we be without more electricity? We had to run through electroshock therapy, which is just really thick mud. We had to just run through more dangling wires of electric shockingness. Ran through those, got electrocuted a fair bit. I actually ran behind two other, JJ and another guy. I only got shocked once, but it was in the neck. One of the uh, electric wires they pushed out of the way, swung, buck, swung back, caught me on the neck, put a shock into my neck, and it just made all my neck muscles just like cramp up, and it was pretty painful. Made it through there, and that was the end. So I got through that in about 16 minutes of talking, but in reality, it was four and a half hours of just grinding through mud and obstacles and horribleness. But it was, it was overall a good experience. I'm glad I did it now. During the middle of it, I was like, what am I doing? I've made such a mistake. Why did Volvic invite me on to doing this? Why did I agree to it? But now it's done. Everything still aches the day after. Literally all of my muscles, every single one aches and hurts. And I've got cuts on my knees and bruises and cuts on my hands and whatever. But... It was worth doing and I think it made some pretty cool video content for you guys to watch once it's all edited and put together in a few weeks from now. I, my guess would be about three weeks from now. So yeah, that is what I was up to yesterday. Hopefully you found that somewhat interesting. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. If, you're, if you'd consider doing the event, if you've done it before, how did it go for you? All that good stuff. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on my next video.